guys, I'm Kristen. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I am still on vacation in Canada and therefore my setup is different than usual. I am in a different cottage than I was in the last video. So we're just going with it. I know I haven't been posting as much as I planned. I've been on holiday and just relaxing a little bit and filming wasn't necessarily my top priority, although I have been reading. For those of you who have been watching my channel for a while, I don't normally have all of my books with me and that is because I live in Denmark and I'm originally from Canada and I didn't really take any of my books with me. Being back in Canada, we've had the opportunity to sort through our storage bin and get rid of stuff that we just really don't need to be holding on to or keeping in storage. And it has given me the opportunity to also sort through all slash some of my books. So let's get started. Okay, right out of the gate, one of my favorites and ones that I have actually been on the hunt for and worried that I wasn't sure exactly where they are, and that is Sailing to Serantium and Lord of Emperors by Guy Gabriel Kay. So this is a duology of his called the Serantine Mosaic. As with all of Guy Gabriel Kay's works, these are historical fantasy, and this one is set in, I think, Byzantine Constantinople. These are definitely keeps and would ship to next destination, absolutely. This box seems mostly Dave. There's another one, Slaughterhouse 5. The picture of Dorian Gray. I'm not sure if this is his copy or my copy, but I do have an ebook copy of this as well. This is timely. I actually said in a video recently, I think in the birthday book tag, that I wanted to reread this. It is uh, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. This is probably Dave's copy. Um, I'm going to put it in my pile and I'm going to read that sometime soon. Okay, The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. I read this a few years ago, and while I enjoyed it, I will probably unhaul this. The Let's by Charlotte Bronte. Uh, I did actually really enjoy this book. I'm going to keep it. I think this is an absolutely beautiful copy. My beautiful cloth-bound copy of Persuasion by Jane Austen which is probably my favorite Jane Austen book, although I did reread it last year and it maybe wasn't as exciting as I had remembered from when I originally read the book, but it does have, without a doubt, the best confession of love scene ever. There are other good ones, don't get me wrong, but this is the best one ever. Okay. This one I would probably get rid of, I think. Gargantua and Pantagruel by Rabelais. I don't know. I read it with my classical book club. It was... Actually, that's a lie. I didn't read this. I read some of it. It was a DNF. Brain on Fire by Susanna Callahan. This is a memoir about a period of time when the author was hospitalized for sort of like this um, brain infection, sort of, I don't remember the, the medical details. And it's a very chilling kind of creepy tale about her experience. I don't know if I would read it again, but I'm not ready to unhaul this, I don't think. Okay, I think I, what I found is the box that had most of my classical books from my time with my classical book club. So we have A Passage to India by E.M. Forster, which is about colonial India and like a criminal case, I guess, that's going on at that time. It's really just about like colonial India and racism. Oh, here is my copy of Eugene Onegin by Pushkin that I talked about in that birthday book club or birthday book tag video as well. Trace Raquin by Emile Zola, and it is sort of like this woman wants to kill her husband. So it actually wasn't great. I would maybe get rid of this. I'm gonna put it tentatively in the, in the hall pile. The fridge just turned on, so it's making a lot of noise. Not ideal filming situation. Then we have The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. I really did enjoy this. Um, and I remember we went to like a really cool book themed bar uh, for our book club chat that night and they would like create a cocktail based on your book. It was really cool. And this was a really cool, if kind of like gross, creepy book. I've never seen the movie though. Let me know if I should watch it. Watership Down by Richard Adams. This was also a pick of mine for the book club and it's because it is one of my mom's favorite books Ever. It is about rabbits. I think it is very inaccurate rabbit wise, but my mom always talked about it, how it was such a great book about leadership. So keeping that one for sure. <sighs> a Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. Burgess? I'm not sure. I did not enjoy this book. This, this copy 
Penguin Modern Classics with an introduction by Blake Morrison does not have that like glossary or dictionary or whatever at the back where it explains all of the nonsense words and language that he created when writing this book. I would keep a copy of this book just because I think it's a conversation piece sometimes. Then we have Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov, a book that probably needs no introduction. It is about a man who is a pedophile, um, who, you know what, I don't want to get into the details. Then we have The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers. I really enjoy this book. It is very depressingly sad. It is set in like a mill town in the south in the 1930s uh, in the United States. It is actually quite good and it was very, very sad. I would probably reread this because I like depressing sad books. The Golden Bowl by Henry James. This actually also is a DNF. I think you can even see I did not get very far. And that's because the month that we were reading this, something like really horrible happened in my life and I just couldn't uh, stick with it. I found it! Ta-da! My copy of the uh, Fiona Var Tapestry Bind Up, The Summer Tree, The Wandering Fire, and The Darkest Road. But it is in rough shape. I have dropped this uh, in the bathtub. Oh, by Guy Guy Broquet. I don't know if I said that. Uh, but I've read this book a million times. And it's one of those books where it's like, I'm sure it's not as good as I think that it is. But also I love it because... This was the this was the book that got me or series that got me into fantasy reading. Like this was my mom got this for me for Christmas when I was twelve, I think, and it was like you're ready for grown up adult fantasy books now. Here, this is where you should start. Another guy, Gabriel K. Children of Earth and Sky. I am going to be filming a video of like where to start with Guy Gabriel K. Heads up, it's not this one. Okay, then we have some Juliet Marillier books, the first of which is Tower of Thorns by Juliet Marillier and also Den of Wolves. This is book number two and three in the Blackthorn and Grimm series. I really, really like this series. The first one is Dreamer's Pool. I don't see it here. I hope that I come to it or it is perhaps on my bookshelf back home. This series follows a healer named Blackthorn and her companion Grimm and she at the beginning of the series is trapped in a prison but she makes a deal to get out of the prison with this fae that is for maybe a few years. She has to help anyone that asks for help um, and it is a really great series. Okay take number two. My phone ran out of storage yesterday in the middle of filming then I had visits that I needed to make and so different day same stack of books. Here we go. Uh, one of my favorite Guy Gabriel K books, The Lines of Our Son. This one is set in medieval Spain and it is a standalone as well, like Tigana. As I said, I am going to be doing a Guy Gabriel K video, so I'll talk more about this one then. The Last Light of the Sun is another Guy Gabriel K one. I've actually only read this one once, but I'm actually really interested in doing a reread because this is Guy Gabriel K's Viking inspired book and obviously I live in Scandinavia currently and so I'm a lot more intrigued to go back and reread this and see how I feel about it now. Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in the Farseer trilogy. So I read this quite a few years ago. I must have bought the first physical book. I actually didn't remember that I had this because I own the rest of them, the Farseer trilogy and the Tawny Man trilogy in ebook e format, so I must have read the first one and then finished the rest on ebook. I am working my way through the Live Ship Traders trilogy right now, and then I was going to go back and do a reread of the Farseer trilogy. So I think I'll probably take this back to Denmark with me since I'm planning to reread this book later this year anyway. Okay, very random. This is my copy of Pride and Prejudice. I think it was originally my mom's. I think I have an ebook copy, but this is the this is the version or this is the copy that I first read and it is the Collins Illustrated School Classics. It's in very rough shape. It was in this shape when I first read it. This was obviously my mom's originally and I just sort of absconded with it. That's fine. She's not getting it back. Cushiel's Mercy by Jacqueline Carey is actually the uh, final book in the Cushiel's Legacy series. So it's sort of like two back-to-back -back trilogies. There's Phaedra's trilogy, which is the first three, and then Imriel's trilogy, which is the final three. And this is the third book in that trilogy, so it's the sixth book 
altogether. I think I might have made that more confusing than it is. So I do own all of the other books in this. I don't know why this one is in storage and the other one isn't. I'm definitely keeping this. Saints Astray, this is the second book in a duology of hers that was more like post-apocalyptic mutant sort of. I don't remember the details, but I remember being like, this is not anything like the Kushiel series. Uh, and this is the second book, as I said, in the duology. The first one, I believe, is Santa Olivia, and it's blue. I do have it as well. I'm just not sure. It's not in the same box as this one, so it's either here somewhere or it's back home. I think I will keep this for a little bit longer, but I wouldn't be surprised if I unhauled these in the future. I just don't think I'm ready just yet. Okay, this one is very random. Uh, it's Echoes by... Maeve Finchie. I have read the odd Maeve Finchie books. My mom has uh, quite a few of them. This one I actually got at like a hostel book exchange in Nicaragua. A few years ago I went on a medical brigade to Nicaragua and we were staying at this hotel that was like a leave a book, take a book, sort of a library. And I found this one it's set in Ireland. I think all of her books are. And it's like two kids growing up in a small village who are of very different class differences. And they go away to school together and, you know, life happens. And I mean, man, like Maeve Binchy's books are so, so sad. And I think also why I always thought that I didn't like contemporary books because like, I sort of enjoyed the process of reading it, but it was so sad and real problems that I, it wasn't the escapism that I was looking for, but I do quite um, enjoy my Finchie books when I read them, but I also find them like very, very depressing. I think I will hold on to this to be honest. Okay, now we have some that I think that I'm going to unhaul. So The House of Sand and Fog by Andre Dubas III. It is a contemporary about like a misunderstanding of like a house ownership that goes awry. I think there's a movie. It, it was fine. It was an okay read. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for. I would maybe reread. I think no, I think I'm gonna unhaul this. Now I'm like, should I just read it one more time to see if I enjoy it better as an adult than when I read it? No. Okay, I thought I was gonna unhaul this, but now I feel like I need to read it once more just in case. These ones I'm definitely going to unhaul, and that is my Fifty Shades copies. I don't need these anymore. I actually think I own the ebooks as well. Uh, I don't see the first one here, so this is the second one, uh, Fifty Shades Darker, Freed, and then the His Point of View book that was horrible. Uh, I mean, they're all bad, but... So yeah, I thought these were quite a riot when I read them. It was unlike anything I had ever read before, so just basically... I had never read any smut and I was like shocked and intrigued. So thank you to these, but goodbye. And then I have 11 of the 13 series of unfortunate event books. I think what happened with these is that I just aged out of them by the time they were done. But to be honest, I don't know what I'm going to do with these. Part of me wants to give them to my nephews, but another part of me really wants to keep them even though they're incomplete. The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. Part of me thinks that this might be Dave's copy, but I definitely did read this one. It could be my copy as well. I'm not sure. Either way, I'm going to be keeping it, although I am not actually a big Hemingway fan. I have really tried. I have read a lot of Hemingway. He's just not for me. Then we have The Circle by Dave Eggers. Eggers? Not sure. This book really freaked me out. Uh, I know it's made into a movie. I haven't actually seen the movie with what's-her-face Hermione Granger, Emma Watson, and Tom Hanks. So I do plan, I've always planned on watching a movie. It just hasn't happened. Uh, no, but this book really, really freaked me out. It's about like social media sort of, or like everything getting put on the system. It kind of turns into Big Brother at the end. Really crazy. I am, am going to unhaul this, not because I didn't enjoy the book. It was enjoyed it. I just like don't have any... Um, attachment to it. The rest of the box is mostly my partner's books. So that it is the like Jean, Jean Le Carré, the like the, the spy novels, the um, A Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy series, and then a lot of his classics. So I have read a lot of them, uh, but they're not my copies. So uh, I'm gonna save those for him to sort through. Okay, weird mix of books in the next box. So my Caroline B. Cooney um, Losing Christina series. Did anyone read these? I was really into them, but also they were terrifying. It was sort of like K 
kids who have to go to like a, a school and board with house like boarding families at the time and she I think she had some sort of magic but also there was something really creepy going on with the boarding family that she was into I don't know I'm never gonna read these again they don't have any particular special attachment uh, for me so I'm gonna unhaul these Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince the world of El Terra, the dragon conspiracy don't remember. Random sci-fi fantasy maybe that I read. I'm gonna give this to my nephew. Under Heaven by Guy Gavriel K. And this one is inspired by, I'm not sure which dynasty, um, but this is set in like a alternate historical fantasy China. Okay, and then absolutely in the wrong order are my Outlander copies, which I'm going to save. I don't think that I actually finished the series. I might be missing the last couple. They started to get kind of a little bit repetitive towards the end and I kind of lost a little bit of interest. So Outlander, again, not in order, Drums of Autumn, A Breath of Snow and Ash, Ashes, Dragonfly in Amber, Voyager, The Fiery Cross. More Guy Gabriel K because as I said, I have everything that he has written. Tigana. I was planning on doing a reread of this. I do have a copy on hold of the library. If it fits in my luggage bag, I will maybe take this back with me. And then Guy Gabriel K's only attempt at young adult, Isabel, do not recommend. Swing and a miss on this one for me, but I will talk about that in my Guy Gabriel K video. Okay, these ones I'm definitely not getting rid of. Very special books to me. The Sky is Falling and Looking at the Moon by Kit Pearson. Okay, I had a feeling it was Kit Pearson. And these are historical fiction young adult or like middle grade books about children from Britain who were sent to Canada during World War II uh, for their safety and they essentially like board and live with a family in Toronto. The first book is about sort of that experience of going and what is that what that is like for them and Looking at the Moon is written at the end of the war and it is sort of time for them to go back to Great Britain. These are really great if you or your kids really like historical fiction, um, like young adult middle grade sort of vibe, these are really, really, really lovely. And I definitely sobbed, I think probably, definitely in Looking at the Moon, um, probably in Skies Falling. And then we got these gems. Twilight and New Moon. I do have Breaking Dawn, but I don't know where it is. It must be in a different box or maybe back home. Part of me is okay with getting rid of these, but also I just feel like they're like a dime a dozen. Does anyone even still buy these if I gave them away to a secondhand store? By the time that I read these, there was like a movie was already sort of in the works. It hadn't come out yet. And I thought my friend had told me that the actor playing Edward was going to be Chase Crawford the actor who plays Nate in the Gossip Girl series. So when I was reading the books, I pictured Nate from Gossip Girl, and then it was not. <laughs> it was Cedric Diggory. And they look very different, and my experience was ruined. <laughs> Practically done here. There was two box left, one of which turned out to be a bunch of like textbooks or workbooks from my partners. The final box is half recipe books, and the other half is Van Gogh's Letters. I am actually a little bit of an art history geek. It's like the complete collection of the letters that Van Gogh wrote to his brother. Definitely keeping this. And then it is my Black Company books. So this is the first trilogy, I believe, the first trilogy bind up. Oh, by Glenn Cook. So this one includes the books The Black Company, Shadows Linger, and The White Rose. Then we have the Books of the South, with, which has Shadow Games, Dreams of Steel, and then I think the Silver Spike is actually separate, but it is included in this bind up. And then I have The Return of the Black Company with Black Seasons and She is the Darkness. So I think that there are other series within this world and with the Black Company, I just don't have them. And these books I will be keeping. I would maybe do a reread of the Black Company to see if I still like it. I have heard Glenn Cook since described as sort of if uh, Joe Abercrombie was the father of Grimdark, then Glenn Cook is like the grandfather of Grimdark. I'm not super into Grimdark anymore. I don't know that I ever really was. I don't know that I knew that was specifically a thing when I was reading these books. I just enjoyed them. But I would, I'm, I'm interested in doing a reread at least of the first trilogy to see if this is something that still interests me and is worth keeping. But I don't have time to do that now, but sometime in the future, maybe when I am back in my physical space with these books again. 
Okay, that is it. I have a kind of moderate stack of books that I'm unhauling. I think there's 16 included. There are some that books in those series that I'm unhauling are missing. So there's probably more on my shelves back home that I'm going to be able to unhaul as well. But getting rid of books wasn't really the point of this. It was more to physically find and make sure that I knew where all of my books are. A lot of these were ones that I knew I had and did not know where they were. So I feel very reassured that I have found my copies of these books and I'm gonna be putting them in storage with better labeling this time <laughs> so that I know where they are and can ship them to wherever I happen to go next. Anyway, that is it for me today. Have a great day, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye.